How's everything been? Oh, pretty good. Yeah. Good. good. I watched what? um I watched uh the uh, the uh, and and enjoyed immensely the video with Keen and uh Professor Heffler, Heffler, I think his name is. Right. That was really good. I had and I had put um I had put I think neoliberal world order that list I gave you which I had a great list in my head. Of course I can't be bothered to write it down, right? I'm just too nice for that. Right. And then and then I was like, oh, let me send Daniel a list of what I had in my head. And then it was a, I gave you the junior varsity list. So that oh. was, I just couldn't quite remember everything. But it's funny because they were I, I, I'd like to talk about that, because when Keen talks about the neoliberal world order, there's a very big difference between the way he talks about it and the way the other guy talked about it. So yeah. anyway, that was, that was great. I really like that. And again, I was the 68th view. I'm not sure why it wasn't. Uh, I heard you guys talking about view count. And I was, I was well wondering why, what the deal is. Yeah, I mean, um, I think with this endeavor, um, uh, by the way, Scott's part of Planksif, right? So he mm. puts on several series uh, mm. and uh, he's um, uh, producing a meetup where he actually went through, um, we went through uh, Charles Bernowski's series mm -hmm. and um and we have a we have a lot of fun with a small group of people. And um I think that the idea is is that starting the initiative, the 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 mindset shouldn't be shouldn't make you fear and tremble over the fact that you don't have the 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 immediate onslaught of people. And um um and I think that was kind of the idea because a long form mm -hmm. discussion is something that you know there's there can be good that comes from it. Uh, it is recorded, and that's why I advocate for YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is, is is primarily because YouTube has a little bit more of a um, a long term thing. There's something I watch a video that was recorded ten years ago, or you know this kind of thing. And so, rather than trying to chase or guess, uh, you know what that market wants, or try and deliver something for, I think it's much easier just to. Hey, you know, like today we're going to talk about the brave new world, or we're going to talk mm -hmm. about uh, the neoliberal world order, or whatever mm -hmm. you know, whatever's on the docket. And I think that that's as long as it's interesting to you and a few other people, then there's substance for it to 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 you know to multiply down the road. Right. And that was kind of the idea. Um, the actual strategy with with Keen is is something where. He when he said yes to me and doing a weekly series, mm -hmm. um, he said to me, uh, "Let's just start a new channel." And I was like, "Oh, okay. Um, a new channel is difficult." Okay. Um, mm -hmm. My personal opinion is that there's so much out there in terms of YouTube channels that um, it's like anything in a market. It it's become saturated a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Right. Let's say. You know, we can dismiss dismiss the value of Facebook, but part of it has to do with the maturity of the product, if you want to look at it that way. Right. And so um, the bigger conversation at PlankSip is to try and figure out how we can um, co-create product together, co-create material together. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to create material together, then let's do it um based on the classics or you know based off of of things that um provide more longevity than than the typical news cycle you know right 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 yeah and have we started recording we're right we're rolling yes yeah yeah we're okay, going. great great i like that <laughs> yeah it's just i i didn't even i didn't even uh realize until i saw the thing up there it was because there was so much there yesterday with um uh, a couple like with, with, with what you're talking about with mentioning uh, Weinstein and Heather Hying and I, I hadn't heard I hadn't listened to any of their stuff in a while and I it was a, a bit of synchronicity uh, or a fate or you know the muses were working with us or something because I had listened to uh, a podcast of theirs they were guests on I want to say James Dellingpole's pod or, or, um, it was, maybe it was, um, spiked. Um, 
the 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 British gentleman whose name I'm is escaping me, of course, right now. When I need to recall it, but um, there, I didn't realize how cogent and methodical and ironclad their case against the COVID policies and against anyone getting a vaccine except for the people who are older and or have serious health problems. They're not playing games with that. I was surprised to hear them so, and it's just, you know, they're, like you said, these are liberal progressive people. I remember when Weinstein was first on Rogan's podcast and he called himself, he said the same thing on Rogan's podcast that he said on Tucker Carlson's first blurb when when Weinstein got booted out of, of uh, Evergreen. He said, I'm deeply progressive. Mm. And that's a direct quote. And yeah. and that's where I was, you know, I was I was surprised because what brought this up was this long form discussion is where they lay out their case. And I believe it was on Spiked. Um, and it was quite good. It was really, yeah. really something else. And but but like you said, you know, they're they're. They don't seem overly concerned with like grabbing a ridiculous amount of views, and they certainly aren't concerned with following the mainstream narrative. And that was really oh, but, noteworthy. But they certainly have a huge following, huge, enormous, right? I mean, yeah. you know, they were, um, yeah, they're they're absolutely huge uh, in well, terms Weinstein, of intellectual circles, right? Oh yeah, well sure, and also, well, I mean approved intellectual circles now no they have a well-received yeah. podcast but i mean you had what happened at evergreen it went viral on social media i remember seeing the video on facebook from someone tangentially connected to me back when i was on facebook and then tucker carlson and his staff see it so he goes there and then joe rogan saw it and he was on there where he could spend two and a half hours explaining what happened in front of Rogan's audience, which even back then was very, very big. And, um, and then, you know how on Rogan's podcast, they'll play the clips. Mm -hmm. So they played the clips of Weinstein outside of his room saying, look, this is important. What happens now? We can't just go about this frivolously. And he of course got shouted down and the sheep start shouting four legs, good, two legs, better. And um, they got run out, physically run out of town. And mm. Rogan's able to play that. And so that then translates into, like you said, a well-received high-volume podcast. But the fact that they're so good on the vaccine thing, and by good, I mean thoughtful and um, – and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Thoughtful and, and logical. Reasonable. It, yeah, he's – Reasonable. Well, let me give you a little bit of. I think I think some intuition and background on that. I don't mm. know why I disappeared, but yeah, uh, you, you fade in and out. You're doing that's pretty cool. Is there like a button I can do to do that? Yeah. I like so. That. So if things are going my way. I just vanish. I like that. So the the message I would want to give the listeners is that um, I I I lean left or progressive out of choice because I think it's a it's a more difficult position to take. Hmm. Mm. I do. I, I think it's it's more difficult to progressively think how to affect change in in the world, right? I mean, I, I mean, I by default can go back to foundational values and say, um, yeah, there's an, an inherent um, value in um, in 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 the hard work and you know, the kind of stuff that my grandfather would tell me, right? Right. right. <laughs> yes. And and look, it's it's uh, I, I I was very fortunate to have. Um, very good um, father and grandfather figures, excellent family, raised really well, good values, mm -hmm. this type of thing, right? Um, the progressive position, I think, is 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 more difficult um, because, on a um, by definition, it's progressively trying to figure out things, you know, mm -hmm. to me, to me, right? Right. So this is one of the heuristics that I I, I want to convey to anybody listening. Um, now. The problem, I think, is that when when all of these new ideas and approaches are put forward, um, this is where uh, you know philosophy is immensely important. I think 
and maybe undervalued because, you know, we can talk about things like justice and we can talk about um, things like um, government structure, uh, an aristocratic um, uh, structure versus democracy, representative or otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, we can, uh, you know, we can talk about things like um, responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. And what I'm I'm hearing is the the single most valuable piece to mount as an argument against um, a progressive liberal agenda, right? I'm using that mm-hmm. in a little bit of a pejorative sense is to say, what about the responsibility? Um, are you going to own up to the responsibility? Are you going to do what you say? Or are mm-hmm. you going to direct people to do that? Right? Right. Yes. And I think that's, and I think that's, uh, you know, fundamentally the issue. Um, uh, and, and, and I, again, I'll come back to kind of this, you know, um, you know, first person, this first principle premise of it's a harder to sit. It's a harder position to take if you don't anchor it in my position's right because it makes me feel good or right. virtue signal. And mm-hmm. of course this is the right way because it doesn't, it make sense to save, you mm-hmm. know, dying, starving children sort of thing. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, that's, I think it, it, I hadn't thought of it from that angle before because I, I think the way you talk about progressivism, yes, that is a very difficult path because it's progressivism and left-leaning people have been so vilified by the current, you know, woke group, the virtue signaling, status jockeying, clout chasing weirdos who seem to be controlling things these days. But um, I mean, look at somebody like Glenn Greenwald or or Brett Weinstein or Matt Taibbi, you know, Caitlin Johnstone. These are people who are truly progressive and y- you worded it very well they have an extremely diff- difficult existence because the current way of things is not this like you said difficult grounded let's see if the progressive idea can be put forth um because it's been like a lot of a lot of movements with a lot of good in them, it's been completely hijacked. I mean, the mm-hmm. left has completely blacklisted Glenn Greenwald. They don't even allow people on his show, mm-hmm. right? If you're a reasonably well-known professor and you're a leftist or a left-leaning person, or, or forget about it, if in the media, they there's a standing order. I don't know who gives the orders, but they are not to appear on Carlson's show. So mm-hmm. Glenn Greenwald can't, He's on show. He, Greenwald is on Tucker's show and Fox every once in a while. But Greenwald has been blacklisted on the leftist shows. He's, he's not on Democracy Now anymore. Mm. Um, but he has the, you know, Daniel, the same kind of difficulty that you have, because what he has to do is nine times out of 10, he's got to explain to on Twitter that the ACLU has lost its way. And but the 10th time when they do something fantastic well, he's following the his first principles, and he's like, "Here, the he's like, I he even had a tweet the other day. Greenwell did. The ACLU does a lot of has completely lost the plot, but when they do something well, they need to be, um, they need to be recognized, and that's the a lot of the progressive ethos where you have standards and morals and consistency. That's completely been obliterated." So you, Daniel, you do have a difficult path. If you're going to maintain a true left-leaning progressive way, you're going to get attacked just like somebody like me. Yeah. No two ways about it. Yeah. The, the, the interesting thing is, is that, I mean, I was, I, I, I had more of a conservative approach when I was younger. Um, and there seems to be an irony at play because um, I don't know how, um, maybe the worst thing for the environmental cause actually was um, uh, it, it being interjected into politics. Mm-hmm. Remember when you know Bush won the the election back in oh I don't know when was that the nineties? The first one, the yeah. Bush the father was the election of nineteen eighty eight. Oh no, the second Bush. I mean, oh, because that was yeah, um, that was two thousand. Yeah, because yeah. then you know, then it it you know came to that almost like. Um, uh, 
you know, swing vote or whatever. I mean, it was yes. a very close election. Yes. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the uh, environmental movement, you know, um, kind of kicked into, yeah. into that agenda of the left. And mm -hmm. um, I, it, it, so here's a simple sort of um, thing that I want to, if, if, if the conservative, if the conservative mentality is about uh, holding on, conserving, well, not being wasteful or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Right. Well, ge yeah, generally. I, I'm not a conservative, and I, I don't think they're doing a very good job. But anyway, in general, yes, conserving traditions and maintaining uh, a generally Western way. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm really reaching here. I mean, I am. Mm -hmm. I'm disappearing again, but I... I I'm definitely <laughs> pitching here mm -hmm. because I'm just trying to illustrate a point that in, in an investment situation, there's something like prudency, right? Are you going to be a prudent investor? And mm -hmm. what do we hear from the time that we're young, you know, save money, be a prudent investor, don't go with the ups and downs, try and go for the long term, you know, this type of thing, right? Right, right. And I think that kind of sensibility is is where we should all find common ground right now mm -hmm. in relation to the environment and unnecessary spending is my issue, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have, to, you don't have to be um, a rocket scientist to understand that um, you know, people producing things just for them to go in the garbage is is kind of ridiculous and silly, right? Yes. And that conservative mentality, if it wasn't so rocketed by the jet fuel of, um, or or catalyst of of like disposable GDP, right? In capital growth, I mean, shit. There's such a benefit to it. We're living yes. in this peak of luxury because of. Mm -hmm. of that prosperous consumer uh, era. Mm -hmm. And the sensible part of um, it, my wisdom, and I think our collective wisdom is to say, I think you better, you know, kind of watch what you're spending. You might want to think twice mm -hmm. before, you know, this kind of thing, right? Right, yes. And I think that kind of value is what needs to be um, brought to the, biodiversity and the environmental issue okay that's what mm -hmm. i think needs to be brought that these are the groups that i think should be championing it for some right. reverse reason we have the other side championing it which really has nothing to do with like it's supposed to be the left has been about liberating right it's like oppression with women or minority groups or mm -hmm. so there's the people that go about the business and then there's the guys kind of like coming around saying hey you know what those groups that group over there they're really getting the shit end of the deal can you do something right. to help us out here right you know yes and reasonable reason prevails and everybody kind of gets along and all this kind of mm -hmm. thing right right so i do understand the fundamental of taking that group and saying well let's put them in charge is kind of like uh <laughs> wait wait a minute like do you know how to build a bridge? <laughs> you know, like exactly. when it comes to a military, do you know how to like do an operation? Do you know how mm -hmm. to like do you know how to execute on these types of things? Right. Mm -hmm. Or do you just have good ideas? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. No, it's a great, it's a great um, it's a great way to put it. And you have the the that that laser-like focus in the left of the old days. And that's why I like hearing somebody like Steve Keen talk, because it, it's like an, an echo from the past on like a left leaning person who can think straight and has, has, he's got a, that, I don't know, I, I guess cause he has the accent and being an American, you know, I have this bizarre idea that if you speak with an accent, like he does, it just means you're super smart, right? Even though it's completely oh, yeah. ridiculous, you know, I, I, we, you and I can't do that. It's really too bad. But, uh, um, it, it, because he, he has a, 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 like like people from his era, a, a laser like focus on when there are institutions of power or groups that are taking advantage of their position of power, or things like that, and saying, "Here's what the issue is. Here's the problem. These people over here are getting a the 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 short end of the stick because organized power over here is running rampant and needs to be." 
controlled. And when he talks about, uh, he didn't talk about it with, with you guys the other day, but he talks about a debt jubilee. Yeah. You know, my conservative days 10 years ago, forget about my libertarian phase. I, it would have been like dropping an atom bomb on my lap. Like, what are you talking about? Like a debt jubilee. Well, I, I had to pay my loans back. And I, we the, look at the people who took out, you know, it's their own damn fault and all this kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. he's, but he's right. What he knows, I don't know if it's intuitively or through study, but that you have the student loan industrial complex has completely gotten out of control. Yeah. And, and, and Keynes, uh, I'll just, you know, left-leaning answer, I guess you could say, is debt jubilee. Just wipe it. Just, yeah. just crack it. And it's, it's caused problems for me at work because I have seniors, high-achieving uh, 18-year-olds, and I drum into them, find an affordable uh, next level, whether it's community college or high-end school. Um, our valedictorian last year was one of my students. She got a full ride to NYU. Good for mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. It's a woke hellhole, but you get to go to NYU for free, you take it. Yeah. And um, – but, uh, you know, I, I, I drum into them, find a school that you're not going to get saddled with a crazy amount of loans. And you go into a field where there is a job market. Because if you do, if you mess up one of those, it's bad. You mess up both of them, you're really in a difficult place because you're going to have a degree you can't use. You're going to have a hundred grand in debt. And uh, the guy you just mentioned, the W. Bush in the early 2000s, changed the bankruptcy laws in the United States. And this is where Keene knows, as an economist, you're now messing with the soup and you're making it bad. Now you can't expunge student loan debt if you declare bankruptcy. The credit cards will get their money first. Then if you have a mortgage, they get your money. And you can't get rid of your student loan debt. And the credit card thing, that's your boy there, uh, Daniel. That's Joe Biden as Mr. Credit Card. He's been the voice of Visa and MasterCard for 30 years. Mm. They're first in line to get paid. That's yeah. our current president's legacy. And mm. you, him and he and Bush made it so that the banks and Fannie Mae and these people, uh, it wouldn't be Fannie Mae, it would be uh, Sally Mae. They, they can't lose. So yeah. tuition st- skyrockets and somebody like Keene is ready to pull his hair out. Because he knows that regular good people are getting destroyed. Yeah. And so, you know, he comes in like a wrecking ball and says, here's what we need to do. Unfortunately, I don't think he uh, is being listened to by the people in charge. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's an aspect of his, um, of his material that um, I think if he gets into the right circles, Mm -hmm. um, I think he'll take off. Uh, right. So if if we could get him into the, uh, you know, the Weinstein or the Sam Harris circles or, you know, mm-hmm. these kinds of things, um, you know, Peterson, Jordan Peterson kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he'd do really well because he's very snappy, quick on his feet. Yes. Uh, he's got a great personality. So right. I'm going to do what I can to try and do it. But again, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a media company that started in 2016 uh, mm-hmm. trying to sell anything but cat videos. So it's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know wait uh, you're not doing cat videos where's the off switch on this thing yeah I'm, that's right no cat yeah. videos how do i turn this thing off <laughs> <laughs> but but look i'm an entrepreneur right so yes. here's the very the, the proof is in what i'm doing i was like i'm an entrepreneur um i could do umpteen number of other things trying to make money mm-hmm. right i mean this this is not one of them Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'll tell you right now, there's oh. in, in terms of getting academics to agree, it's like herding cats. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, but I think if if this represents the most um, intellectually progressive part of our society, it's why mm-hmm. we send our students and our kids to school to get a mm-hmm. higher education. Right. Right. Um, if that's the case, well, then, you know, let's let's promote more of this kind of uh, you know, thought leadership out in, 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 uh, in culture. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's why I advocate for trying to change what it means to consume. We're so stuck on the GDP model of producing something just for the sake of producing something. Right. 
And right. yes, I I'm going to have um, one of the ladies from uh, Carmen Medina on a, on a show six part series with blank set. Mm. She's an ex CIA uh, analyst, very high Ooh. up in the CIA. Okay. And um, she, uh, the one example I really like of hers is about the cognitive bias that we have. So she was involved with the Iraq war and she was involved mm -hmm. with um, the uh, Afghanistan situation. And so she has to advise, uh, you know, based off of all of the information that the Central Intelligence Agency has, which you could say is probably the most cutting edge in the world. It has to sure. be. I mean, right. OK. Mm -hmm. um, if not the, it's in the top, whatever. You can hold oh, your sure. hand up and there's just that, they have to be, that, that yeah. it, you know. So yeah. she's saying that she'll explain to a country, and in this particular case, she gives Iraq as the example, and she says, mm -hmm. um, you know, we tell them what the worst case scenario is, okay? We come back in a year and they say worst case scenario happened, how come you didn't warn us? Oh, and so oh. Carmen said, wait a minute, um, let me understand something. When we told you the worst case scenario, did you think that also meant that it was less probable? Mm. Right. And they were like, uh, yeah, I thought mm -hmm. that's what you're saying. Right. And they're like, she's like, uh, no. Mm -hmm. So here we are in a situation with identified seven tipping points on uh, on 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 um, our global economic system, for example, mm -hmm. okay, all of which a neoclassical um, economic system has really just basically said um, may result in a, a few like uh, drops in, in in GDP overall, right? And so, really trivializing the effects of of anything that that's coming, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we say. Okay, fair enough. Um, which is complete bullshit, as a you know, according to to King, and I mm -hmm. agree with him. Okay, mm -hmm. um, he's even written a paper and submitted it to the Royal Society. So this isn't like you you don't just even get a PhD and think that you know you could just submit papers to the Royal Society. He was invited right. to submit the paper to the Royal Society, right? right. It's like yeah. that's a big deal, and yeah. so. There's there's there are some roadblocks that he's trying to work his way through in terms of final submittal. But the the point is, is that he's got valid criticisms against what our politicians and leaders are actually implementing in terms of change. Right. Like right. if you were elected in, in government and or even an administrator, we we're talking about this before. And, and if you were an administrator in a school system, mm -hmm. th some school systems have large. Um, you know, large, a lot amount, a, a lot of power because they can control a lot of funds and stuff like that. Right. So, you know, if you look at how to react and the economists in the world are basically saying, here's what the result is. Like you can see Greta Thunberg and she's like, you know, waving her, her flag around and people mm -hmm. are getting all crazy, the end of earth and all this kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> but you can yes. say my economists are saying, you know, it's not really a big deal. These are the guys we rely on. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when they're wrong and you have someone from their community going, you guys are like, you guys should be held liable. This right. is horrific what you're doing to our population because mm -hmm. it's a part, it's a science, it's a social science that people typically gloss over. I mean, how, mm -hmm. how intuitive is economics for the average person? Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, it, uh, that's a good question because in some ways and in some people, it it is intuitive when it comes to their own selves, right, mm -hmm. or their immediate circle. When you start talking about what's good for a larger group or good for a country or good for a state, it gets, you know, it gets muddled. I mean, we go out on the street and say, well, are you are you guys uh, are you down with a, someone like Steve Keen, neo Keynesians, the old Keynesians, the. Chicago monetarists, the Austrian school, the public choice people, like you go out on the street right now and do that, you're probably going to get attacked. Right? So, you know, hey man, get away from me. <laughs> they're going to yeah, look at you like you're <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they're going to put you in a straitjacket and it's nice knowing you man, and you'll be in a cage for the next 5 years. But uh, you know, it's 
you you that that kind of thoughtfulness about it but you're right like the you said the key word is accountability and there is so little these days right and that, that I'm curious to hear that woman you talk about on on the show because that's uh, that's a great little nugget of you know did did you think it would be less probable right and that's this kind of economic mind thinking yeah in her case but I can see why if someone hears, even myself, oh, this is the worst case scenario. Oh, okay. Well, you know, that's not going to happen because, well, that's just the worst case scenario. It can't. It's just not going to be that probable, but it doesn't really mean that. And I hadn't really thought of it that way before. Yeah. But, uh, it's one of the things where, it, we're going back to Keen again, I, I should probably start a, a fan club. I'm probably the Bronx Keen <laughs> Club <laughs> chapter president. But uh, so <laughs> population one, I think. <laughs> Uh, here in the Bronx, but uh, the way he spoke, and this is with accountability type stuff. And okay. it's, I didn't think I was going to come at it from this angle when I was thinking about our conversation. If you'll notice, I like the professor guy, Heffler. Mm. I like the way he talked. I like his style. But if you'll notice, he's still in the university system. Yeah. And if you'll notice the way he spoke versus the way Keene spoke, because Heffler was talking about the flat earthers and the anti-vaxxers and vote Republican and stuff like that. Only in a university does that kind of talk fly, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you group anti-vaxxers? I'm not even sure what that means, right? Is Weinstein an anti-vaxxer? Is Heather Hying an anti-vaxxer? Is Doug Marola an anti-vaxxer? Just because we think about these things and look at non-mainstream media sources. And where Mm -hmm. does the flat earth thing come in? Why toss that in there? Oh, and it means then the lowest end of the economic and intellectual spectrum, go vote Republican. That's yeah. university talk. And I'm tired of it. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. that's and, – and I like the guy. I like the way I, – I, he just seemed to have a really quick mind. I'd like to hear him more. I didn't know that he was in, in the platform. Um, mm. But that's – you can see how somebody in the university – it's almost like they get poisoned by that kind of – you know, like, and Republic voting Republican doesn't mean what it did pre Trump. Yeah. Those two parties in the states, the best thing that happened to the Republican Party was Donald Trump because he went in there like a wrecking ball mm. and destroyed the metastasized Bush, Cheney, mm. Mitt Romney cancer mm. that had taken over. And he, he, he just took a flamethrower to it. And it's mm. glorious what he did. <laughs> I, I, I know those you, you haven't heard those words strung together very often have you but it really is the the um you know the the free trade foolishness the stuff that Keene talks about the republicans were all over that they love that stuff um and and trump the, the shame of it all is that hasn't happened in the democratic party and i'm a a, a card carrying democrat here in new york city Right, uh-huh. registered Democrat from the old days, um, but what the it, National what, Party hasn't had that happen yet. Yeah. Uh, so, do I uh, dare ask about what you think about Tulsi Gabbard? I'm kind of a fan of Tulsi. I like Tulsi. Yeah. Um, I, I like her style a lot, actually. Um, she is the best Democratic politician on the war issue that I've heard in a long time. And um, she has an independent streak and she wouldn't bow down to power like she got raked over the coals in the media, the left leaning media, Rachel Maddow and these types. I think Hillary Clinton even went after her and she wouldn't bend the knee, Mm. which I really, really liked. So Tulsi Gabbard is someone if I'm let's say uh, if I'm heading the administration, she's the head of the Department of Defense. Oh, wow. She, I mean, she's she was there. She had the courage to say, "This isn't working. Mm. This is a mistake. This is years before the Afghanistan pullout fiasco from a couple months ago." Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the 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 real left, the the Dennis Kucinich's were talking about how the war was a terrible thing from the start, and the hardcore libertarians. Ron Paul was on this Six Ways to Sunday mm. fifteen years ago. He and Kucinich would team up periodically. And try to get legislation, they wouldn't get anywhere because you have a principled leftist and a principled libertarian. Mm-hmm. And they got nowhere, but they were just fantastic in codifying the issue. Then Gabbard shows up 10 years later, has been there, and says, 
this is this is a train wreck. This is a yeah. huge mess, and that takes a lot of guts because there's a lot of power players here in the states with that military industrial complex. Well, let me see if I can, uh, you know, speed things along a little bit here because mm. I've got some real world experience as well too. I mean, I've I've got mm. so much of my adult career has been in architecture and construction. Mm. Um, I'm working on a uh, still involved with a. Um, a, uh, a custom home manufacturer. It takes these homes, they can raise up and down, they can be built on floodplains, they can move in the direction of the sun for like Ooh. lots of multi- Oh, they're just the coolest thing, right? Wow. Yeah, so I've been involved with that. And um, with our liberal government, which is the same as a democratic gover- government mm-hmm. that's in power, um, it's been difficult to you know garnish or like pull together all of the resources to make something this large happen, right? That's mm-hmm. already with a paid off $10 million facility and a half a million dollar PPG paint line. This is, this is, and these are people that just started yesterday. I've been doing this mm-hmm. for 20 years. Wow. And the, uh, you know, the guy that in, um, that owns the plant, he's, you know, one of the best in, on the coast, right? Mm-hmm. Now, so you have somebody that is, is worth, $20 million in, mm-hmm. and I mean, just in like production capability on the Pacific right. coast, to be able to make things that matter to people, which means right. housing, right? Okay. So that's, he's good to go. And so he goes, all right, so there should be some government incentives for me to, you know, keep this thing moving forward. Cause it is mm-hmm. really in, in the goodness, in the, you know, it, for the good of everybody, right? Sure. So what's the top of these applications? Okay, so what is your LGBT hiring requirement? What is your right. indigenous, what is this? How do you prioritize? And I'm, we're like, what the f- are you talking about? Yeah. What is this? Yeah, unbelievable. Oh my God. Could it's you imagine that bad? You were, well, could you imagine you were mounting a war? OK, right. Like, when, when you have to get and you have to build a bridge across two ravines, mm-hmm. you're trying to figure out how what's the most efficient way to do that with the minimal loss of life. Mm-hmm. OK, the problem mm-hmm. is climate change and the issue of biodiversity collapse is in the in the, we're in the wrong party. Yeah, it needs to be in the conservative party. Yeah. And that's where true um, change happens. So earlier you mm-hmm. said, you know, you're 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 um valedictorian student ended up going to a woke university yeah and NYU, say, 75 grand a year good for her go right. and change it yes take it and be that nugget from the inside and you'll have a voice you'll have this the loudest voice preach yes yeah. that's what i that's what i i don't put I, your head down don't this is why we get along because yeah. I said the same thing. I told them, I said, here's what you're going to come up against. And I said to them, go there and change that out of control foolishness that you're going to find there. This completely lost the plot, completely lost their way. Go there and change that. I said, and some of you are going to get poisoned by it, right? Yeah. Some of you are going to be the bureaucrat that tells your friend who and you and your, you and your friend who are, talented entrepreneurs you got the, that construction idea is amazing that sounds fantastic but then when you need to go and get government permits or whatever they ask those kinds of things I, i'm in the public school system in the new york city area it's like that um this, we have the same thing like we mentioned last time we spoke right what is the criteria for school leadership and you know it's not what it was, let me let me tell you. I had a I was a youngish teacher. I was probably in my late twenties, and I was at some staff development thing. And one of the mentors was a guy who had taught at Dewitt Clinton High School. It's where James Baldwin went. Um, they're la- they have a laundry list of of amazing alumni, and it's in the Bronx. It's not too far from where I live. And he he told me, you know, he was asking if I was getting thinking about becoming an administrator. I'd been teaching seven or eight years. And he told me back in the olden days, the 1970s and before, you couldn't even apply to be an assistant principal unless you had 10 years of teaching experience. That was step one. Step two, steps two and three were you had to pass a written test, which was insanely rigorous, 
and you had to pass a verbal test, an oral test, o- oral, spoken word. If your language skills were s- substandard and you failed one, you didn't have to fail both. You, you didn't pass, your, your application is tossed in the garbage. Try again next year. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the, the, the crumbling of our institutions, the, the, the reason why no one has faith in them anymore is because that hurt people's feelings. And people who weren't able to get the job done organized and said, get rid of this. And um, the board of, it was, I forget what it was, the board of, I can't think of it now, it was the board of something. It was within the New York City Board of Ed. And they were in charge of making sure that the cream of the crop became school leaders. And they dismantled the whole thing. And now it's, that, I mean, what you were talking about with these forms for construction and architecture, that's like a caricature. It's like, it's like watching the, it would be like if it were part of a Three Stooges or Mad yeah. Magazine, right? It's like those, you, you expect to read that in National Lampoon. Like, yeah. wait, wait, this is serious? But it, but it is serious. And in the schools, architecture, I mean, it, it's really like a, like a cancer. It's really horrible. Well, yeah, and I, but, but I do also, and in, in the same breath, want to recognize that there's um, minority groups where, you know, we want to be careful about what we say. Yes. Right? I mean, and I know that as an owner of the media outlet, I'm actually introducing a new series with um, uh, somebody from the LGBT community who's also going to be doing a series about um, na- uh, like native rights and stuff, right? And right. so, but I think there's a time and a place for it. Yes. Right. right. Um, and, and I didn't do that to say, see, I've done that. I did it mm-hmm. because I think it's an important topic. Yes. Right. Um, right. Jordan Peterson may say it's an important topic, but he's mm-hmm. saying, don't change the language. Don't right. force me to do things that are just um, like tyrannical in, yes. a, in, a, in, a, in a government that values free speech. Yeah, J- J- there's a guy Justin Ray- Raimondo. He was a ha- hardcore libertarian. W- wrote, uh, uh, I think he founded AntiWar.com. He was part of the Ron Paul libertarian thing. Really talented writer, a gay guy in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And he said something I'll never forget. He died a couple of years ago. But Justin Raimondo, he wrote a great book called The Betrayal of the American Right, which is okay. fantastic. That's a whole nother conversation. But um, the what he said was with the LGBT community, he said, we've become what we used to hate uh, where we are the ones now pushing things and lording it over people. And if you don't say the right thing, you're cast out, right? We are now using our kind of social power as a bludgeon. And it's everything that we used to hate. This guy grew up in San Francisco in the bad old days when people would get attacked, yeah. right? Where, yeah. when it was really rough. Yeah. And um, a working class kid. And uh, he, he was really he didn't talk about it much because he was a, a talented writer, an anti-war activist and one of the hardest core libertarians you could possibly imagine. Uh, but he I, I never forgot that. Like he he, he never brought up the issue. It, and, and when he said that, it started to make sense where these people now. If you want to, you know, you, you can be in a position of power and no one's allowed to criticize you and you're not held accountable. Well, well, now we're going to use this power and we're going to crush Daniel and his friends and we're going to make them do as we say. And um, yeah, I don't know where the, I was going with that, but well, it, was, the, it, it, was, it was perfect until the uh, to the end. The thing is, mm-hmm. is <laughs> the, <laughs> I, I agree with that dramatic, you know, or the, to dramatize it is fine, but. I think I think that if we if we assign uh, you know the language of um, like bludgeoning or I, I know you're just being over dramatic, but mm-hmm. the thing is is that there's no one person actually doing it. It's not no one's pernicious. No one has yeah. prejudice against somebody. They're just what they're trying. They're trying to do something good, um, but I don't know if they realize how difficult it is to put business together. Right. Um, uh, I dis I disagree. I think you're being too nice. Yeah. I think you're. Uh, you need to come down to the rough part of town. You need to come down and swallow in the mud. Okay. <laughs> because you need to get dirty. Okay. Um, because the there are people like that who are well meaning. I agree with you. But there are there are the numbers of I don't I don't know what the percentage is. There are malicious people out there now 
who have no problem and would have no issue seeing you, seeing me, some of the people in our circle burn. I, and I mean that, like burn the house, physically burn the house. You have, um, uh, uh, get, they can't work anymore, right? Uh-huh. If you have children, no, 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 you should be fired. Let me put it to you this way. On Twitter, there was someone who tweeted out there was that horrible uh, car act, car, uh, the guy plowed into um, a parade, right? a Christmas yeah. parade, and it was in Wisconsin. Yeah. And yeah. someone tweeted out, and it got a boatload of tweets and likes. Hey, man, that's just karma because the Rittenhouse verdict, that's what they get. And people uh-huh. were applauding it. They were cool with it. That yeah. is disgusting. It's repellent. And some of those people, too many of them, Daniel, yeah. are, are, are they're malicious and terrible people, and they will bludgeon. They're not the people that you're talking about. And I, I like those people where we're trying to do something good. We're trying to lift up some of the people that over time have had gotten a, gotten a bad, you know, had a, had a bad time of it mm-hmm. and been pushed around. Those people are out there, but they're not running social media. They're not running the Democratic National Committee. I don't know where they are in the Canadian government. They seem to be hiding in a hole somewhere. Mm. Um, you have a lot of maliciousness out there. Yeah. And, and that's that's the thing that it takes it takes some people it takes time to wake them up. That's why you someone like Matt Taibbi or Greenwald. That's why they if, if, look at their Twitter feed. Yeah, because yeah. people have come after them. People have come after Taibbi said made he he had a great comment on an article somewhere where he said the worst thing that he did was he apologized. He had said something a little nutty as a younger man. Mm-hmm. And he apologized to the woke mob. And he yeah. said it was the worst thing I ever did because yeah. they smelled blood in the water. And they said, that's a weak one. We can now end his career. And they went after him even harder. These people are sick. They're really, they're really bad. I'd maybe be a downer mm-hmm. on a Monday night, man. I know. Maybe you got something to drink over there. Maybe something <laughs> Just it, water, my friend. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> water. That's what we're calling it these days. Okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's 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 that rough. I don't mean to go off on these tangents, but but these are topics that need to get out there. And this kind of like good Samaritan left leaning person, they're out there, but they've been shoved aside. Yeah, I, I and I still wouldn't frame it as the like. And again, I'm being more abstract. This is going to be the philosopher me in, in, in me. Yes. Um, is that. Look, I, I, how much of it is the system? How much of it mm-hmm. is the indoctrination of the, you know, I mean, that's that's yeah. kind of the point. And Good question. This is where Sam Harris's tagline really comes in, is that we have to have conversations. And if we, if we enter into the conversation saying that you're one of those people, right, mm-hmm. right. then, you know, we're, we're defeating ourselves. Yes. Um, Sapolsky... You wrote a book called Behave, and really the essential ingredient in all behavior um, is that it's the worst of times and it's the best of times. I can be, um, in in certain conditions, I can be the worst representation of human um, nature, right? I can can be that person. Now, we've challenged ourselves to think, you know, if I was that protagonist in that story, I was that Nazi soldier, what would I do? I'd Mm -hmm. like to think that's the case. Right. I like to think that's the case, right? Right, but mm-hmm. is it really the case? I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think we're very fortunate to live in a uh, a very progressive, wealthy society. I mean, the fact that mm-hmm. you know, you're, I mean, I guess there's pockets of the United States that are kind of horrific. I don't know if you'd qual- quantify the Bronx as one of those, um, but you know, isn't it generally speaking that? You know, the United States and Canada, the G7 countries have oh sure so much better than the West, yeah. the rest of the world. And, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean. And even here in the Bronx, like if I could show you outside of where I live, you'd be like, wait a minute, that's the Bronx? I'm in, yeah. I'm in a nice part of the Bronx, and there are a few of them. I know the image, and I'm not dodging bullets, you know, on my way home and, you know, <laughs> running for cover. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't live like that. Um, 
but uh, yeah, that's, well, it wasn't that's in your a, collective bargaining agreement, is what you're trying to tell me. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. The school not, is that powerful, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, that's not in the contract, right? Yeah. See that that's so, that's that's the liberal si- silliness. We can poke fun yeah, at it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That, that's yeah. You know, we got you got you have to laugh, man. You got it has to be that way because and I, it's a gigantic philosophical question. I think we should touch on periodically is because we are so wealthy because. And I agree with you. I think your your the way you put it is 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 really good. It'd be, it, but is that because we're is it decadent now? Is it too wealthy? Is it too easy? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's one of these things making the rounds on the internet. Is you know only there's so many things that only in a wealthy society could you have a problem like your forms in Canada for it, construction. Right? Yeah. Like, oh, we don't want to keep using that one as an example, but it is a good, it was a minor one, but it was frustrating. So what happened is it just like, a, you know, business moves fast. We didn't go that route. Right. Because right. the government support was not there for, you know, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. We weren't giving them the rubric they were looking for in terms of. Right. And right. I and I, I doubt that it was the, the, but, you know, if they only have certain amount of money allocated, then what you find is that people try and, I will say game, gamify the system. If they understand mm-hmm. those are the parameters, mm-hmm. then people will come with business ideas to, right. to, to do that. Now, they may yes. not have the actual capability to do the project, but they'll mm-hmm. come up with something that sounds really good and brings people yep. together and has this group over here. And we can, mm-hmm. and it's just like, okay, yeah. so fast forward 10 years and what's the result of that project? Yeah. Right. You know? Someone got well paid. They're living large and they, you know, they consumed funds that could have yep. gone to much better stuff. The grant writing LL or not LLC, the grant writing and nonprofit world here in the States is rife with that. It's a complete yeah. dumpster fire with that kind of nonsense going on. And, you know, you wonder, I don't want there to be any kind of monster collapse, but I mean, there's the old saying where, a wealthy, decadent person, well-fed person has many problems. A hungry person has one problem. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're not worried about the, your uh, someone's opinion on uh, politics or the LGBT agenda or the black neighborhood. If you're wondering where your next meal is coming from, you're not worried about any of that stuff. Yeah. So the only good thing. I don't know if good is the right word, but if the American dollar collapses, and I hope it doesn't, and I don't think we're going to necessarily see that, um, all of this nonsense that we talk about stops Yeah, right away. It's, it's over because yeah. people are going to be like, well, do you have food? You know what I mean? Like, I, I yeah. think we're too we're It's where there's too many things in place for it to go that way. But there could be a huge economic collapse. What they've done to the American dollar is a travesty. The Federal Reserve has turned into a complete farce, and um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's nothing left for them to do. Mm-hmm. They have one. They have one weapon, and it's yeah. make more money, create more American dollars. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I know. You know, it's, again, it's another tangent. I apologize, but you know, a lot of this chaos comes to a screeching halt when you go to the store with your. Paint, paint your green slips or your plastic card with the magnetic stripe on it and it doesn't buy anything right yeah. or or the truckers don't bring food to the supermarkets here in the city then there's going to be some it's going to be a uh, night of the living dead it's going to be uh, uh the walking dead zombie apocalypse yeah so look for me to knock on your door when that happens so i'll be make a beeline to vancouver and that's the reason why i think we need a um, an agreed upon contingency plan f- when the libertarian potential evaporates. What do you mean by that? Well, let's say if I simplify the idea of a libertarian position and I say, and, 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 and I don't want it, actually, I don't want it to be something that I'm saying as a, as a position. I think that's mm-hmm. kind of the wrong idea. I want to do it as somebody who's a role model. Okay. So you say, I knew this guy who um, never asked for a goddamn thing from anybody in his life. He was a self-sufficient man or woman, right? Mm -hmm. They got up in the morning and they say, 
my happiness, everything from my happiness to my livelihood, I am responsible for producing and taking care of me first and foremost. Mm-hmm. And then my family, well, like then when I'm ready and I'll have a family and this type of thing, but right. no one, they, they did by their own achievements. Okay. This kind of thing. Right. Um, and I think there's an incredible power to that. Yes. Right. And it's not, and I think what's pervasive in the universities is we can label it quickly, dismiss it as a Marxist, blah, blah, blah. And you'd be correct. Um, but the to, idea, a, to a degree, to a degree. To a degree. Yeah. But the, but the idea that that self-driving um, autonomous responsible citizen, right? That is not left or right. That is Correct. something we should all be striving for. Yes. Right. And that's, right. that's kind of the idea that, um, mm. you know, I think we need to remind people about, and when we find right. that point of agreement, how do we build from there? Um, yeah. And yeah. if we have this crisis in front of us, which I truly think we do, mm-hmm. um, then, you know, my mandate is to try and get conservatives to listen and realize that, you know, it's it's the conservatives we need when shit falls apart to be able to, right? Uh, you know, put this thing back together or get food to the grocery stores. Right. Yeah. I mean, and it's, you know, I, I, I'm not an expert on Adam Smith and I've only read parts of his stuff. But, yeah, it's like he he even he was like, you know, look, these these capitalists who want to gather all this wealth, they're kind of weird people. They're odd. This obsession with money is strange. I mean, this is Smith himself. Yeah. Uh, but but they serve a great role and they create and he didn't know it at the time, but they create Ford. They create um, Whirlpool dishwashers. Right. They create these big monolithic companies and that they they raise people up with their creation. He's like, they're a little odd themselves. Right. It's a little strange to be maniacal about building something like that it takes a lot of time it pulls you away from your family but on a but scale they serve a role. Of 10 on a scale of one to ten tell me how, how what's your genius rating for uh, as a as an orator or a, somebody who's a, a rhetorician okay what's your speaking ability like uh, it, tell me uh, on a scale of one to ten how how good of a a, a speaker you think you are uh, ten being genius level zero being yeah. Uh, what I, amoeba, what I saw amoeba. in the South Bronx today? <laughs> an amoeba. <laughs> <laughs> right. An intellectual houseplant. I use that one with students. They love it. It's great theater. Ah, I hate houseplant. Um, uh, I would say, and I'm not being falsely modest because I know very bright people and I'm not at their level. I would say seven. Okay. All right. That's good. Six That's and good. a half, seven. I'm going to give you bonus points depending on how you answer this question. You see this, you know, kind of thing. Okay. So that's like a teacher thing. Yeah. 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 So, so did you very geniusly, um, was this like a lead in to brave new world at all today or what I said now? Yeah. Your example. No, because it would have been a really good lead in. I see it. You see it right now. It just popped up. Right. Right. That's metaphysics for you. Yes. I haven't said it. Mm Mm-hmm. But what that represents, what Brave New World represents, right, is is a perfect. Uh, so let's talk about the Brave New World. Yeah, yeah, man, good, good call. Um, gosh, I remember. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think of. Well, it's funny, Brave New World, and 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 the the hatching process, right? The se- uh, uh, double double ionic semi morons or something like that um <laughs> you know they would play with the oxygen when they were hatching people and stuff like that and uh it, it's yeah which one which one are we in and maybe brave new world is the one where um where we're residing now um and I, and, and brief side note i just watched a documentary on eugenics because i'm running my seniors through some of this stuff and moron was a term. I wonder if Huxley used that intentionally because moron was seen as a clinical term for the feeble-minded in the progressive eugenics. Eugenics is the dark chapter of progressivism that they hide mm-hmm. because they were really, really into it. Um, and they don't really like to talk about that anymore for obvious reasons. 
but uh, moron uh, w- was a clinical term. And I wonder if Huxley, uh, what, he, what he meant that, if, if that's where he got it from. What, um, what angle were you thinking this hit or, or, or vibed with Brave New World? Oh, well, the, up? well, I mean, where I, my next point I thought was the most appropriate was the, um, the structure of the intellectual class. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. I can, in two separate arguments, uh, advocate for a meritocracy for saying mm-hmm. that the right people and the most qualified people to do the job mm-hmm. um, are, are, you know, the right kind of system of government. Right. Um, I can complain that our um, our you know, like, but I think the conservative kind of fear is a slippery slope fear. So mm-hmm. what happens and I think this is something that. Um, is part of that prudent nature is to say, I don't want to give up an inch because if we, um, if we give any of our uh, freedoms away, we're then going down the rabbit hole of, you know, Huxley or Orwell sort of thing. Right. And I think right. because they're so meaningful to us, these books, mm-hmm. that, it it does swing the other way where it says maybe we're putting too much emphasis in it and we are all really good people and we should really try and face this problem together because mm-hmm. the dystopia that some of these books, um, but that these books actually portray are not actually the fact of current day. And they don't mean that that's how they will move into in the future. Right. It's mm-hmm. just, that's how I would talk the conservative back from the ledge to say we still need dramatic sweeping change mm-hmm. because um, like whoever was captaining the ship before just was heading towards the freaking iceberg. Yes. So we got to go this way or that way. I don't give a shit which way. Right. But we right. got to pick a way. Otherwise, we're hitting the thing. Yeah. Well, what happened was in the American conservative movement, it got hijacked. Uh, like all good things, and they kicked Murray Rothbard out, gosh, probably in the late 60s, early 70s. They booted guys like Tom Fleming, a really good conservative author. He got kicked out of the cool club mm-hmm. for writing the truth about things like World War One. Best World War One book you'll ever w- read is called, um, uh, shoot, it's here on the shelf. What's it called? Um, the Illusion of Victory, Tom Fleming. Fantastic. And, you know, you're not supposed to write. You should have pulled it out because there's like this illusion of a bookshelf behind you because we're in that. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Hold on. That's right. <laughs> Watch it. It comes out. Yeah, of, here it is. It comes out of the ether there. Yeah. Let's see. It'll, it'll show up. I don't know how well, well it shows up. It, it doesn't, but I'll show it on the I'll show yeah. it on the the graphic yeah, guy the illusion of victory and yeah there's the america's one of the worst if not the worst president it's in history wardrow wilson on the cover and um and and so these these fleming out rothbard out and and weirdos like uh uh, uh irving crystal and then his son bill crystal like these are not these are trotskyists who hijacked the conservative movement made it completely impotent Turn them into the Washington generals so the Globetrotters could just dunk on them all the time. Just tomahawk dunk <laughs> one after the other right in their face, posterizing them every which way to Sunday. Yeah. And um, it has turned into like this brave new world, decadent. Let, where's the Soma? Right. Mm-hmm. Let's fornicate all the time, but we don't have to worry about the child birthing that's handled at the hatchery. You know, this kind of uber elite, twisted, broken a decadent world of just nothing. Whereas the savage as the proles are in 1984, they actually live real lives. And, and that's the, that's, you know, yeah, you, you can, if, if you could ever get a a revived conservative movement with integrity and strength, yeah, maybe, but here in the States, the conservative movement has been so, ruined it's like a it's a the butt of a joke i mean ann coulter clowns on the conservative movement all the time and she's right you know she's like you guys conservative movement, you guys couldn't even conserve the girls bathroom yeah <laughs> yeah which is well, a great one-liner but it's true right you know, that, you know that term about the left eats their own you know that yes you heard that before oh yeah okay, so yep. 
here I am kind of like the honorary lefty right in the room going, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, yeah, I ran for the green party and all this mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Right. Like that's what I'm right. trying to do. So then, then I, I, I see that, uh, Biden gets elected. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. He gets elected. And I, I'm like, okay, great. Okay. Let's get behind him. But then it just starts. Oh, he's yep. this, he's that, he's this. It's like, wait a minute. You've, you just elected him. It was yeah. everything to get Trump out. You elected him and now you can't stop talking shit about him. Yeah. I don't get yeah. it. Well, I mean, it was the, 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 the 2020 election is just fraught with huge issues. And um, the, the, the Trump thing, you know, people were, he was living in people's minds. It was such a strange situation that, uh, yeah, they, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard. This is such, these are such strange times here in the States when, when it comes to national politics that I don't even know what's happening. You hear scuttlebutt about how the Harris people dis detest the Biden people. And then you've got Hillary Clinton over there doing her thing. And then the Obama crowd in DC trying to pull the levers. Like it really seems like a complete mess, but yes, the left eating its own, um, I think is appropriate here because it's now just power grabs and money grabs. There's, there doesn't really seem to be any integrity. That's why I like your point about you being a left-leaning person and trying to recognize people and help them out using the levers of government. Those people are very, those people are, 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 are you know, I think of Tulsi Gabbard, and, but she's not a congresswoman anymore, hmm. right? Or, or Kucinich, he's, they, they pushed him out. They pushed him out. Hmm. And um, uh, Taibi, Matt Taibi did a great review of his book, which is which I, which I might have to check out. It's, it sounds wonderful. But my point is, like, you, you're 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 wondering why Mustafa Mond, a.k.a. Joe Biden, mm -hmm. right, <laughs> is 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 the head of this crazy, nonsensical, illogical, decadent, multi gazillion dollar planetary empire you know hey how come it's not working right well because it's it's too far gone uh, you know you're again i think it's your your brilliance is coming out because i like the way you talk yeah i do i know you would it's, that's what, <laughs> keep but talking Daniel. Is, yeah 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 so <laughs> there's there's some i, I want to summarize big big picture okay about okay the, but look if you're going to be a philosopher you're going to learn you have to be able to learn about the flaws of your own positions, even mm -hmm. right. Just yes. say I take a position, and well, what are what are the problems with that? Right. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is a sensitive topic that if we talk about a global liberal uh, new world order, right? That was mm -hmm. one of the topics. Right. Um, the left will say, ah, it's not a new world order. That sounds fascist, and stop doing that, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Um, there is a consensus in in climate change, okay, mm -hmm. of global fix, mm -hmm. okay, That's right? Embarrassing. We, we know that. Um, what I don't understand is that within, well, I don't want to say I don't understand it. I understand it clearly, but it, it, it's like the only option uh, for fixing things is to bring the entire world along, right? And so I, I, this is a difficult one to try and, uh, you know, tease out. But mm -hmm. the policy is, is that we bring everybody up. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, is like, oh, America made too much money for so long. And we're there. So we have to give it to these. Other. I, I think this is what this is so antithetical with anything that has ever, ever happened in history. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, right. Let's just go. Like, is this what. Um, what it means to be a modern this was is what modernity means is that because before a king wouldn't say actually we have a problem and you're right I'm going to give everything away to everybody right there is such a thing as power accumulation there's mm -hmm. there's winners and losers there's geographical areas there's that that's the reality of what we live in it just happens that nobody's attacked anybody yet right in, in the most mm -hmm. recent while because what did we fight wars with? Financial, GDP, growth, this type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I question, as a good thinker, I say to myself, 
what if the foundation that we are all getting along is not the case in a downturning economy? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So does the U.S. have to be increasingly nationalistic? I'm going to say, does it have to be? It. W- let's just say it will be, even in it, an economic. It, all, it already it's is. Just like, boom, the walls are going up, and mm-hmm. we're the global superpower. And mm-hmm. no, we're not going to give away. <laughs> what, what's the matter with you? I don't care yeah. if Noam Chomsky thinks that an American <laughs> job is slavery. Right. Right. It's only in America he's allowed to say that without getting shot. Yes. So good on you, Norm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that's and the the it's it's yeah teasing out this topic because it's a huge one. But the a couple of things. One is, and I don't know if it was engineered as a as an altruistic movement from the start, but the global warming, climate change stuff. Um, the conspiracy community has been on this one for ages, where it's talked about how that got hijacked ages ago. Because remember, the big goal, and this is again, I'm talking in the conspiracy community, and they have a case that if you want to have a world, they do. They you're do. going down points, man. You're going nah, down. Uh-uh, right? you're gonna, you can't, this is a nope. trick. This is a you're Jedi gonna, trick. You're gonna I be know a, this yeah, is. Okay, we're going to keep going. Yeah, you're going to be a convert. <laughs> um, the, again, but uh, you want a world government, right? I mean, think about it. The, you know where the UN is? You know what used to be there? You huh. know who owned that land before the UN was there? That was Rockefeller land. Okay. They said, here, take it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. These are oil barons. This is one of the wealthiest, these the wealthiest family, two or three in the history of humanity. And they put that there for a world government. And so if you the 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 scuttlebutt, not the, the it's not even and there's there's people that can really point out some interesting stuff when it comes to congressional record and who's for and who's against. But the idea of, well, if we want a world government and what is the United Nations, but it was supposed to be, I mean, no one really pays attention to it anymore, but it was supposed to be this world body that Mm -hmm. other countries listened to and gave credibility to. And it was supposed to be above the nationalistic countries. And the, the chatter is that they used And to a point, they succeeded taking over the environmental movement to, you know, that we need the we need the world to band together with them calling the shots, of course, not Daniel Sanderson or Doug Marola. No, 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 no. The people at the top are going to call the shots and they're using that, again, altruistic movement of people concerned about the environment to further their agenda of world power. And it sounds a little bit crazy, but I'll tell you what, you know, I'm in the public sector and there are some people who are just ladder climbing, power hungry weirdos. Yes. And and I would agree with you, Doug, but mm -hmm. I think I want to see the military fight for the environment. Then if I was hearing the, the, the military complex saying, yeah, the science is real. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, who's at the forefront of science? You telling me that the military doesn't know that this is exist or is a problem? I want to hear this from the general that says you're right; it's a problem, and we're going to do this about it. Yeah, but they but the, but the the clo- climate but change glo- but the climate change global warming people shot themselves in the foot way way early on by every time someone pointed out an Indian summer day here in the states. Oh, that's oh, global yeah. warming. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, global warming. Right. Okay. Fine. So then regular Joe goes on social media and it's, you know, like now it's going to be below freezing here tonight. It's snowed today here in the Bronx. That's not, that hasn't happened in a long time. Mm -hmm. And you go 50 miles North and it's below freezing now every night, all night. That's Mm -hmm. really cold. But if you say, Hey, look, doesn't this make your global warming world? It doesn't, it doesn't really jive with what we were told back in 1989 or 1992. And it doesn't. Oh, though, that's weather. That's weather. We're talking about climate. Well, wait a minute. And that Indian summer day in November when it was 68 degrees and it's only five days before Thanksgiving, you were saying, look, that's proof of global warming. You can't do that. You can't do that with thinking people and have that kind of double standard and hypocrisy. And you take that small example I gave you and you multiply it by 10 billion. And that's what you get on Twitter. So on Facebook, Instagram, like you get all of this kind of stuff. And so 
I, you know, I, I don't do the global warming debate anymore. I, I just, I, I kind of right. check out because I invest in, uh, I don't know what's going up there in the Athabasca basin, but they're printing money hand over fist, man. Mm-hmm. Right. I invest in uranium. I invest in natural gas because I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I happen to think that because of the, the Russian scientist who went in front of the UN and said, look at the sunspot activity. It's going to be really cold for the next 15 years. I've told students, I said, watch. I said, I tell them, I said, I'm 49. You guys are 18. When you're 25, six, seven, and we're in the middle of a year over year cold snap, which can go between five and 30 years, depending upon what this, what the science of this woman says, they're going to say, oh, we meant that all along. I said, they're going to say, oh yeah, really cold. That's what we meant. That's what we meant by climate change. And they didn't. I'm old enough to remember I don't know if I'm going to live that long. My, my family history, right? Doug Morland is going to be in a box, but um, they're going, they, I'm telling you, you, know, you could write it in blood. It's going to be 2032 and it's going to, growing season is going to be short. It's going to be insanely cold by where you are and where I am. And they're going to say, yes, this is what we meant by climate change. This is extreme cold. And I, they, 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 so they lost me. I, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll do the climate talk, but. I don't get angry about it. I don't get emotional about it. I try to be a good steward in terms of recycling. I get mm. very expensive paper towels and toilet paper made out of bamboo so it doesn't cut down trees. <laughs> it's true. It's real paper. It's, it's R-E-E-L. It's a great company. I, like, I do that kind of stuff on my own very quietly because yeah. I'm just not going to be screaming at people anymore. It's just too nuts. And that's well, why the environmentalists have to take their cause back. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting because I, you know, as a friend, I, I say, I think there's, I honestly think there's a lot of misinformation in there, what you're yes. talking about. And, um, but I'm okay. Possible. I'm okay with that. I mean, you know, anybody can look up these, these positions and understand that, that, that it's the point of a disagreement and, it's it's basically the entire position of my family in Alberta, right? And I love them just the same. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll go back to Steve Keen and his show, and I'll mm-hmm. say that he says, you know, one of two things are going to happen if climate change is, is true. Mm-hmm. Okay? And one is that we're going to have some serious uh, changes happening fast, either mm-hmm. by our government or by nature. Uh, right. You know, it, things will rapidly change. Okay, mm-hmm. um, and regardless, whatever happens, um, Keen thinks that it's we're reactionary. We're not. Um, we're we may know this is coming, but mm-hmm. we're not going to do it until it's like the kid putting the hand on the on the fire burner. Right? You're not going to change your mind and go, "Oh yeah, it was a public." relations and marketing fiasco that fucked us all up right right we didn't have the proper scientists and the proper people in place you know putting Mm -hmm. putting the correct information in front of us and putting a plan forward to us that made sense for us right Mm -hmm. right that didn't happen i mean my biggest disappointment i don't know like i'm on the pacific coast and an entire Mm -hmm. city got flooded Yes, Abbotsford in this area, and it was—it's all yeah, right? right, right. And it's a part of our area that naturally wants to flood. We were just stupid humans and built in an area that you know we have a way of doing this. The Alberta mm-hmm. floods, where I'm from, there was a place just outside of Calgary called High River. It was a name from mm-hmm. a native name, and I, hmm. I can't pronounce it. Right. But like, just imagine the native kind of conversation. Uh, you know, the white guy comes into the room and right. says. Uh, yeah, we're going to take over this land. And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, what do you mean take over? Yeah, we're going to call it, uh, what, what was the name of it? It's a, a high river. Yeah, that's a perfect mm. place to build houses at a whole community, a city in fact. Right. We're going to, on this place called High River, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Whoops. <laughs> now, I'm in architecture, and right. my issue is that I'm upset at our community. There's, mm-hmm. When I take things and I'm trying to build something, for example, I take it to an engineer mm-hmm. and they do stress tests on it, right? Right. For example, to make sure mm-hmm. that, you know, it's going to last. Is the beam properly sized to build your house? 
Right? Mm-hmm. These are the things you want to know, you want to have answers right. to. And when you're building, you build for 100, 200 year disasters, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is, is that why would you build it on a flood plain? Right. Where was the oversight? Where was the mathematical mm-hmm. oversight to make sure that this didn't happen? Mm-hmm. And so we say, is there a place for oversight that trumps uh, like purely commercial interests? Because a lot of the commercial interests that put those houses and communities and families on those properties um, were influenced greatly by the ability to make money and have value of millions of dollars mm-hmm. property, right? right and yet now the whole thing is flooded right and you think, well, well who loses all the people in that area do, the right the, and that's the thing do the do the builders lose does the insurance company lose like someone's got to take a loss for that like i mean is there you know that's that that's the thing how isn't a market supposed to work that way I hope it's not just the builders make like that's what happened here in the states during the housing boom. Mm. Builders built, they yeah. made a killing, yeah. the whole thing economically cratered, and no one paid for it. No banker, no housing, no nothing. It just it just happened. And regular families lost. That's why this sounds tragic. If these, you know, you have the flooding and you have regular folk, and if they're the only ones who take the loss, it's part of the reason why we have a maniacally large and justifiably large army of people who just don't trust the institutions anymore because every way yeah. every time you turn around it's regular it's joe and Susie six pack getting their teeth kicked in right yeah exactly and i i mean i say if i was a family and i wanted to go buy a house and i hire the engineer and i hire the architect and i put it all through the code mm-hmm. spend a life savings on it and then find out they do something so stupid Right. Why is a whole community in a place that's going to get flooded like that? Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's where it's where the right and the left have been battling. Right. Well, do you have regulations? Do you have the oversight of the government do it? Or do you have just a free market handle it where, oh, well, tough. Right. You should have thought better. Just take the loss and don't build by high river anymore. You know, build on low river. So, you know, (laughs) it's find a different river. So. It's, it's just, um, it is, that, it's, and it's it's going to be horrific, and it's going to be the people at the bottom or the middle class that are going to get obliterated. Yes. So, yes. um, you know, you'll have to tune into the episode that I'm recording at 2 a.m. this morning with Steve Keen. The reason is, is because we're bringing on um, uh, Jurgen Randers, and he okay. was one of the original MIT writers of Limits to Growth, and. Mm. He's one of the climate modelers and scientists, okay. right? So they're going to be, we're recording. Scott's going to come on, I think, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we're doing that. So probably give it a few days. It'll be up. But, yeah. you know, I'm excited to have him. He's coming on later tonight. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't need to suck you. I think I do need to suck you back into the argument because I I just want you listening to the right people. Um, and... I, I wonder what it takes for alarmism to be true, you know, like, yeah, do we need the whole AMOC to shut down and all of an entire country be wiped out before we go, ah, maybe, yeah, maybe we should do something about this. Yeah, yeah I mean, I would, I, that, I, I'll listen because I, I need to hear more of thoughtful people in that world right because it's it's it because it, it, I, I again i like i told you i i checked out a while ago because yeah. of the hypocrisy and the weirdos you know i mean when barack obama gets elected and they they ask him what his legacy will be and he says and i quote well i 90 percent quote because it may not be exactly but he said this will be the day your children remember the seas stop rising and i'm like really like that's I you can find you can look that one up, right? Wow. Like that's 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 a little that's a little odd. And then we talked a little bit about this last time, the fiasco in um Glasgow with COP twenty six, four hundred private jets, Biden's entourage was eighty five black SUVs, right? They didn't rent them at the local rent a wreck in downtown Glasgow. Those things were flown over in you know eight yeah. in C one thirties. So, you know, like, 
That's why I just bail. That's why I'm. Not, that's why you see the way I talk, the way I talk. Like mm. the people who are screaming at me about climate change and global warming, that do that. Like you got to be kidding me. And then Europe has the clause written in the climate stuff and which planes and gas and whatnot, but private jets are exempt. So you here's the, yeah, 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 yeah. Just kidding. I, I'm I, sorry. I, you know what? I wasn't that I'm leaning towards. Um, you know, that they're untruthful. Let's just give them, give them this for, for a minute. Okay. Let's let, say that, say that the idea is that they just lack a natural leadership. Okay. Because if, 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 if you were trying to rally troops, cause I think this is the idea. It's like, and, and it's like, we have, sh we're short on resources. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And so, like you said, you know, they take the, you know, the, they fly a whole fleet of, uh, you know, of, of, of Biden's like, you know, American entourage over there. Yeah, eighty-five and I, SUVs. And and there's there's a part of me that thinks, okay, that I mean, consider that we live in that world. I let I kind of give it a a, uh, a pass, but I give it a pass. But I think they're missing something critical in terms of an opportunity to be a good leader. You're too. And nice. a good leader would be well. Just wait. A good leader would say something like this. Like, could you imagine Biden said, "I'm totally there." from the White House via Skype or secure FBI channel, I will mm -hmm. not spend that. And I don't think we should spend that. So I'm there a hundred percent, but I'm doing it um, this way. Yes. You know, that, that says something in terms of leadership, right? I mean, yes. I do understand that not everybody can completely cut out and it's mm -hmm. kind of frustrating when somebody says, well, you got in the car last week and you drove down and picked up some milk. That was completely frivolous. You could have, you, that was twice in one day you went to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. How can you be for the climate? <laughs> like there's, there's like no, there's no bottom line to it. Right. Well, like, there is, they can't say that about me because I walk to the grocery store and get mail. Right. Which is yeah. true. Like yeah. that's, that's why, that's why I'm so grizzled on this. And I don't mean to be so abrasive and weird about it, but yeah, I do yeah. walk to the, I prefer to Same, walk to yeah. the grocery store than to get into my partial zero emission vehicle, Subaru Forester 2009, <laughs> sage green metallic, and oh, no. drive to the grocery store, which I can walk to. There's, I'm in the Bronx. There's two grocery stores right close to me. I don't yeah, need to yeah. drive anywhere unless I'm carrying 80 million things. But so I mean that. So I do that. That's why. That's why I hear all this stuff, and I just like, eh, eh thanks. I'll pass because. Yeah. I'm not doing any kooky stuff like that. I, 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 I you know, and people are surprised because they think I'm some kind of rabid, fire-breathing, conservative, libertarian oddball. And then I talk about the environment and the, I told you about my bamboo paper. And, you know, my wife flips me endless amounts of hell about getting a new car. And partially she's right because our, my old rickety Subaru is, you know, rickety and mushy. <laughs> um, but I, I don't need to, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, it would be a waste. It would be this consumption you talk about. Yeah. I don't need, I don't need one. Yeah. The one I have works yeah. and I throw some money into it and it's uh, another five years. Yeah. So if I'm doing you, yeah. that, yeah. if yeah. I'm doing that, yeah. then people with way more resources than I have, they can really do better. Yeah. And yeah. They're not. So the smart people in the climate arena are drowned out. They're, they're, that I look forward to hearing these people talk that you're mentioning on the show because it'll be a breath of fresh air, it sounds like. Well, there's, but there's one finesse part that I want to really bring up that I don't think people are answering when I'm on their side. I, mm -hmm. I think of the people, okay? Yes. So if you take the entire gross domestic product collective of the world and you slash it by 90 percent for mm -hmm. example like massive Ooh. collapse okay Oof. right what how are you going to like the best of our minds how are we going to deal with this like how are we going to deal with it and i think this is these how come those plans aren't coming up if you're certain 98 percent certain that climate change is real i mean these stupid things right then tell me how do we fit? How, what do we do about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, good I mean, point. Not, not that we because it's like, what do we do? But we stop you. No, what do we actually do to feed people? Right, yeah, it's going to be a bloodbath, and there'll be an amazing and incredible fracturing of everything. 
countries, states, the Amish are going to be fine, right? The, 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 I don't know what they're, what I'm allowed to call them these days, the Inuit, what we called Eskimos in the old days, up way up north, they'll be fine. Um, kind of. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it's a mixed bag with the, with the, 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 the we're, all screwed. We're, we're all screwed in certain yeah. areas it will be worse than others but yes it'll be know, a great die-off d- does anybody really expect that the 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 prosperity that we're at right now it doesn't have to continue it, it could continue or it doesn't have to right i mean yeah that's the thing the way history works yes this is the cycle i was going to ask you earlier but it's such a huge topic and it is getting a little later than normal for us yeah, but, uh, uh, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you. We can't do this now, but Daniel, next is show, this next show, yeah. is this right? Is this part of the inevitable cycle? And we're alive at the time where the latest empire, the American Empire, is now on the downswing, and we're gonna watch Rome go from a million people to fifty thousand people. Yeah, quite possibly. But I want to tell you, and then we'll talk about this more in the next show. So this can kind of be the closing. But if you think about this, that there's. Um, there's three main um, pockets of population as far as I'm it, I mean this is fairly arbitrary but there's China India mm-hmm. and the United States roughly speaking right. okay okay I represent 40 percent of the population but pretty close to a hundred percent of the ideology okay if you look at mm-hmm. the, the uh, you know the communist sort of mentality and then you know the re- I don't know how we even uh, you, you know describe the Indian continent or the Indian mm-hmm. sort of tradition but Right. India is in that part of the world, and then China and the United States. So we, or our United States, only represents 18% of the population, okay? And mm-hmm. so at what point does the philosophy say, I prefer Western democracy as opposed to communist rule or mm-hmm. this type of thing? I'm not saying they cannibalize each other, but right. what if they do? Right. And that's that's yeah. the kind of thing, because if you see that the um, yet yeah, and, and it wasn't so apparent now or it's not so apparent now. But in the United States, um, when in World War Two came, our grandparents had to think about things like this. Yes. It, my, my participation um, in this war um, is is my life matters for. Um, like a. Um, like, uh, I don't know, like a, a, an individualistic society, an American society, an American right. ideal. That's what I'm yes. dying for. Yes. Right. And, that ethos was there and, for sure. And, yeah. And so um, I think in in the, the heart of the conversation with the global fix, the only defense does not mean because we're in a global economy that everybody gets. And I know that sounds incredibly selfish. But what I wanted, it's a realist position too, yes. to say, let's just be real here. Mm-hmm. There are people that are going to put their arms up and say, this is mine and that is yours. Let's acknowledge I that. I think I it's already happening. I don't do that happening. with my neighbor. I know. <laughs> right? It's already, Daniel, it's already happening. Nationalism is on the rise. Yeah. And, I don't, and that would be another topic that we have to, is that good or bad? I was trained as a youngster that it was automatically bad. Now I don't know, but we have to cover that. But I think you're right. I think you're. It, it doesn't sound selfish. Um, what you said. I, I think it's very pragmatic and very real. I think that's. Yeah. I think that's how it's got to go. You know, and imagine a military commander came out and said, "Okay, here's the problem. Here's how we're going." You need generals to think about this and say, mm-hmm. "No, it's not to come up with a committee that's like strategically put over here. Mm-hmm. It is to do this, this, and this, and have sizes and battalions and response personnel and." We need mm-hmm. to maintain logistics channels. We need to have reliable backup means for communications. We need to, like, guys, we need to reform yeah. things in an incredible way. Right. But it's not coming from the military. Anyways, no. on that, that's a no. great no. ending to the show. I know I drug yes. you a little bit longer. Uh, it's all good. It's good. The, the, our legions of fans are going to just love every minute of it. They're going to get more than they can handle. Yeah, we'll get to about six or eight episodes, and then we'll try and figure out how to repurpose stuff and and grow. So it's always a, yeah. Sounds good. I'm in. Okay. Thanks, man. Appreciate (laughs) it. You got it. We'll see you. We'll talk next week. Okay, You got it. All right, bye-bye.